Here's just sort of an overview slide that maps some of the, the DTN capabilities into scenarios. Uh, and the point here is if you're interested in looking at how a particular capability is either uh, in, you know, configured and invoked or, or what the behavior is, uh, you can you could start with this, one of the scenarios that's here. Uh, that'll at least give you a kickstart for getting things configured and running, and then you can go off and build upon that maybe uh, and, and do some more exploring on your own. So uh, DTN capabilities over here in the left-hand column, a couple of uh, scenarios that invoke those capabilities uh, in the middle, and then more stuff on the right. I will say that there's probably a uh, custody transfer. Uh, the, this has changed. This is the difference in the UDP CLO uh, syntax where we actually added the UDP CLO uh, to uh, the, the, the two for the uh, default uh, RTT at the end of the UDP CLO command. Um, so that's uh, that's actually covered by by this. You don't have to do anything uh, in addition to what we've already done uh, in the configs and uh, and show. Um, so like miss two and maybe I, I should probably run some of the asymmetric routing. Uh, there's a parallel paths that uses UDP and aggregate custody signaling uh, as well. Uh, yeah, parallel paths ACS. Um, rerouting bundles that, that miss scheduled contacts, so miss and miss two will do that. Um, there's a couple. There's a, a couple of data mule scenarios where, and these are the ones where DTN really, you know, if you look at all of the things that DTN was designed to do, handling scheduled routing in these data mule scenarios uh, is the thing that bundle protocol and, and DTN can do. Really, that that. It, that IP cannot. Uh, if you look at a lot of possible terrestrial applications, uh, thing, if you think of things like cell phones and you know cell phones, cars going through tunnels, uh, or you know people going into elevators and, and losing connectivity, and and you say to yourself, well, you know, if I was a car and I'm going through a tunnel under, uh, you know, under uh, uh, a large body of water where I lose con I lose cell phone connectivity. I could do multi-hop and through, uh, through something else to get out. The, the, the time that you really can't do, uh, the, the situation that, that DTN addresses that IP really doesn't, are those times when uh, you, you have end-to-end con -end connectivity, but that end-to-end -end connectivity is broken up by something, uh, by a relay mechanism that can talk to one end or the other, but not both. Uh, so like a cell phone, generally, you've either got a link or you don't. If you have a link, you can talk to the internet and you've got all sorts of storage out there and, and things that are willing to uh, you sort of arbitrate between you and a far, uh, another endpoint in order to manage disconnection of one or the other of you from that infrastructure. Email, right? Somebody sends me an email, I go into, you know, I, I take my driving my car. Uh, maybe I'm riding in a car so that I'm not driving and checking my email at the same time. Uh, I check email. I, I don't have a link. I can't get there. That's fine. That email is going to sit on the server. When I come out, you know, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to, uh, I, I'm going to be able to, to pull that mail. Um, the the thing that, uh, that bundle protocol can do uh, are things when you have either a satellite or maybe uh, an unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, that can move between two things, and it can see one of them or the other one, but not, but never both at the same time. And there, there's just nothing that's going to happen in IP that's going to make that work. Uh, we went through the CFTP, the base CFTP. We talked about the image transfer. Uh, there's some multicast stuff in there. I haven't talked about that here and probably won't, uh, but there is a, a multicast scenario uh, multicast traffic is not automatically generated, so you've got to actually do that yourself. I, I never got to uh, uh, being able to invoke that uh, uh, automatically. Uh, but let's look at a couple of those. Let's say, hey, no, no, no. Um, uh, so these are going to be up in the dev kit. Uh, let's see, we talked about the image transfer. We never, we didn't talk about. Uh, like miss, I guess. Um, so, so this is a scenario with some mobility. This satellite is satellite is going to move around, uh, and these various uh, other 
routers are marked as either downlink only or uplink downlink. So there are two uplink downlinks, this one and the one over here. And, and those are the ones that can transmit to the satellite. The satellite can always transmit down to any of them, is the way this is set up. Um, and what's going to end up happening is this is the satellite is going to go around and there's going to be some sort of traffic set up, uh, probably pings from the middle to the spacecraft. And when the satellite gets around to, to moving from, it's moving clockwise from N4 to N5, uh, it's going to jump away from N5 so that it doesn't make that contact. The, the, the center node here, in the meantime, is going to be queuing up bundles at node 5, waiting for that contact to happen, assuming that that uplink is going to happen. When it doesn't, when once the node 8 has moved beyond where its contact for node 5 should have ended, uh, those bundles uh, um, are going to move out, and I think they jump over to N2. That's either in this, I, in this scenario, or maybe MIST 2 actually does that, uh, but let's go ahead and run this. Um, and and this is yeah. So this is a, a uh, this is a a feature of this thing called session purging uh, in LTP. So it's a function of the LTP convergence layer that's running between the the spacecraft and these nodes down here. Uh, that when the LTP session ends, uh, Ion is going to take all the bundles that it thought were going to go onto that that didn't and essentially reroute them. So here, we can watch all this stuff happen. Again, this is all the visualization. Here we have bundles now that are sort of queuing up at node five. And, and this, I think, sends uh, one ping every like five-ish seconds. So it doesn't overwhelm things. Uh, but again, so here are three, now four bundles that are sitting at node five. And these are all things that are coming out of, uh, out of this middle node and they're trying to get up here so that it can ping. And it got a couple of them through via N2 and this node was over there. So if we, if we wait a little bit more, uh, node 8 is going to go along here. And uh, ION's contact plans are all set up as if node 8 were going to be able to connect to node 5. So, so ION thinks it's going to have this uplink downlink opportunity over here. Uh, and then the, the mobility sort of cleverly takes node 8 far away so that it never manages to make that contact. Uh, and now here there are 12 bundles that are piled up here at node 5, 13. Uh, node 8 stops, it goes faster. Uh, and now here we are. I can still downlink through here and now already that contact with between 5 and 8 has ended and uh, Ion has rerouted all, all those bundles over here to node 2 so that they're conveniently waiting for node 8 when it shows up. And what we should see is when that connectivity happens and when ION understands that that connectivity happens, all those bundles show up. And maybe we'll get one or two more pings through uh, while we're connected to node 2. Um, so, so that's that piece. I'll do, I'll, I'll do one more, which is, uh, sort of the pure data mule scenario. Uh, mule is probably the, the, the simplest, but I'll do Mars. Um, so here you've got, uh, three ground stations, uh, California, uh, uh, Madrid and Australia, nominally, uh, and this orbiter that's sitting out here. And, and something that looks like a Mars rover. Um, so in this case, uh, the orbiter is going to move sort of back and forth between uh, talking to the various ground stations and being able to communicate with the rover. And there's never going to be a time when you've got an end-to-end -end path. The only way to get data from, from down here up to the Mars rover is to hand it to this orbiter and, and let the orbiter just sit and hold on to it and wait uh, until it can move the data through. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly uh, who's sending what where. I suspect the ground is sending things, is trying to ping the uh, rover. Um, and pinging the rover is, yeah, so here's B ping on N2. Uh, feel it. Uh, 
So maybe node 2 is trying to ping uh, the rover and it's going to have to go through Spain on occasion to get there. Uh, so here, uh, at this point, we've got three bundles that are sitting on node 5. And now we've got four bundles. So at this point, I think they probably, the if they're pings, they've jumped through the rover uh, and back onto the orbiter. Now the orbiter is going to move down here. And eventually uh, those pings go through. Uh, now there's a bunch more bundles that have queued up on node 5. These were the other, these were the additional pings that were trying to go out. Now they're sitting on node 5 waiting and what we'll see is once it gets out of range, we see things starting to build up over here on node 4. Things only ever sort of sit on node 5. Uh, you saw a little bit of a uh, motion there as the pings go out to the rover and back onto node 5, and then the replies go back and sit on node 5. So now we've got eight replies that are on node 5 waiting to come back. There are four bundles, now five at node 4 that are waiting to go out. So when this guy comes back and has connectivity, we see a bunch of things get through with these hideous round trip times. All the bundles that were sitting at node four now go to node five uh, and things continue. So uh, you know, we can manage uh, dealing with uh, these cases where we, we never have an end-to-end -end path. Uh, the forward path and the return path are different. Uh, and, and this extends from uh, ION and, and, and bundle protocol are perfectly happy uh, if these periods of disconnection are not seconds, but minutes or hours or days, right? As long as the, the time to live that's set in the bundle is long enough that the bundle isn't going to time out, uh, then uh, you know, it's perfectly happy storing that bundle and waiting for connectivity to become available. Um, uh, maybe one other one would be, let's see, I'll kill you off. Uh, there was one, I have parallel paths, ACS. I think there was a, there was a unidirectional paths, parallel paths, UDP, ACS. Asymmetric routing, oh, asymmetric routing, UDP, and custody transfer. Um, this one's intriguing. Uh, there's 10% packet loss between node 1 and node 2, uh, and a UDP convergence layer from node 1 to node 2 uh, with, a with a custody retransmission set at 2 seconds. So um, uh, he will try to, uh, he'll try to transmit, and there's 10% loss here. So some of those UDP packets are going to get lost, and uh, he's set for to request custody transfer. So if bundles uh, uh, bundles that uh, don't make it across there, he will eventually have to retransmit. Uh, let's see. I I have a, my one question here is whether I've updated the UDP CLO in here uh, to work correctly. So I'm going to go check that real quick. Um, uh, and by that I mean the with the syntax changes to the UDP CLO. Uh, I'm not sure that I, that I set that up right. Uh, and that's going to be UDP CLO is going to be N1 and N2. Well, yeah, not quite what I want. The old, the old way was that you had to give it, uh, uh, if you wanted to turn on, uh, if you wanted to enable custodial retransmission, you needed to give it sort of the full UDP CLO command. So now I'm going to take that. And with that, things should work. Um, I fear that the pings are coming from node 1, which is not probably the, the most interesting case. But so what will end up happening, even if they are, uh, bundles that succeed in getting uh, across this link, and we are pinging from one to four. So this is pinging from here to here, but all of these links are unidirectional. 
clockwise. So I can ping from, from 1 to 4. I can send the bundle across here. It's requesting custody transfer. The custody acknowledgement has to go all the way around this way and come back to node 2 or to node 1. Uh, and node 2 can then forward the ping bundle to node 4. Node 4 needs to send a, a custody acknowledgement back to N2. It has to go all the way around the forward direction. Uh, and then node 4 wants to, to respond to node 1's ping. It sends the bundle out this way. Uh, and then node 3 again uh, has to forward its custody acknowledgement straight to uh, N1 and around to N4. And eventually we get around. So uh, just if you want to look at uh, what's going on with custody transfer and, and how things work in sort of you know weird environments where you've got unidirectional links, uh, that's an opportunity to uh, uh, to look at this.